Hi, and welcome to this talk about headless commerce with Shopify Hydrogen and Vite. My name is Fran Dios. I'm one of the members of the Hydrogen team at Shopify. And today we are going to see why we created Hydrogen, a brief introduction to React Server components, and also how we use Vite to power everything behind the scenes. To begin with, there are many frameworks already out there. So why did we create our own? The answer to that is that Hydrogen is a web framework tailored for online commerce. As you probably know, online commerce is quite challenging. It's right in the middle of two sides of web development that we have here. On one side, we have static pages that need to prioritize and maximize for SEO ranking and performance, such as blogs or marketing pages. While on the other side, we have dynamic web pages that need to that, that requires engagement and interactivity. Think of, for example, a social network dashboard or a calendar web application. Commerce is right in the middle. It needs to be performant and run high in SEO, but we cannot give up on interactivity and engagement either. At the end of the day, it's hard to create a framework that excels at everything. You need to prioritize um, and maximize for the right metrics and features for the problem you are trying to solve. That's why we thought that instead of using a general purpose framework, we could create our own that is tailored for online commerce specifically. Hydrogen is a framework based on React, and it has streaming and server-side rendering capabilities. For the local development, we use Vite because it allows us to focus on important features for online commerce rather than implementing everything that Vite already brings, such as TypeScript or multiple flavors of CSS. Also, Vite gives us a lot of flexibility for implementing certain features that we will see later. In this diagram here, we have an overview of the architecture of a Hydrogen app once it's deployed. In principle, we can deploy Hydrogen to any JavaScript runtime, such as Node.js, Cloudflare Workers, or Dino Deploy. Here, we are going to use Oxygen as an example, which is a hosting platform provided by Shopify uh, for Hydrogen apps. In the Oxygen Worker, which is located at the edge near the users, it gets a request from the browser, process, uh, the request running our Hydrogen app and streams back to the browser a response so that the browser can start painting things on the screen quickly. In the worker, we can make sub requests to the Storefront API so that we can get information about our uh, Shopify store. Or we can make sub requests to any third party API, such as a custom CMS, in case we have a journal or anything like that. An important feature in Hydrogen is the cache. It allows us to customize the sub-request cache, but also the full page cache. It provides sensible defaults, but in case we need it, we, we can manually change them. For example, let's say we have a marketing page where the content doesn't change often. We can use a longer full page cache for this case. But if we have a dynamic page, such as a product uh, page, where some data is very dynamic, then maybe we can use a shorter cache duration for that specific data and a longer one for other data as the sub-request level. Earlier, I mentioned that Hydrogen is a framework based on React. But to be more precise, we are currently working with an experimental technology called React Server Components that was implemented originally by Meta and more recently got contributions from other companies like Bercel or Shopify itself. The original implementation was uh, required Webpack. But at Hydrogen, we made an integration to bring React Server components to Vite applications. The implementation details can be found on the pull request on the, on the screen. Aside from that, I'm going to explain here briefly about React Server components. But if you want to know more details, there is a great article in the Plasmic blog. So I encourage you to check it out. The URL is on, is on the screen. All right, so what's React Server components? It basically allows you to group your components in different types. First, we have server components, not to be confused with server-side rendering. That's a, a step that we will see later. Server components look pretty much like regular components, except for the fact that they need to be stateless. So we cannot use hooks like use state. However, we have access to server APIs, such as fetch. So we can make fetch requests to external resources. And this allows us to do, by combining it with Suspense, we can do fetch as you render. On the other hand, we have client components, 
which are truly like regular React components with state and, and everything. These components run on the server, but also on the browser. So unlike server components, which only exist on the, on the server. Therefore, in client components, we should not place private information, such as private API tokens or anything like that. Uh, since they can have state, they can have they can do interaction like uh, on click and so on. All right on uh, here on the left, you can see there's a React app tree where we are mixing server components and client components. The key is that when we pass this app tree to the React server components renderer, the renderer is going to go inside the server components, run whatever it finds there, like fetch request, and then render the output, which is HTML from the server component. But when it finds a client component, it's not going to render it. Instead, it's going to put a placeholder um, that looks basically like a JSON object with an ID identifying the client component and the props that it should be getting. Once this process is done, we get an output, which is we can call it the React Server Components payload which is a mix of HTML representing server components and JSON representing placeholders for client components, as you can see here in this image. Once we have this payload, we can pass it to the more traditional React renderer that is going to, to keep the HTML that it finds. But when it finds the placeholder, it is going to grab the actual client component uh, thanks to the ID pass the props and then render its output so that finally we get a full HTML page out of the out of this render. If we do this process, passing the server component payload to the render in the server, we are going to be doing server-side rendering, which is useful for the first time the user lands in the in the website. However, if we do this in the in the browser side, we are going to, to be doing client-side hydration, which is useful for like subsequent navigation within the same page. Also, this process is compatible with streaming, meaning that when a node is rendered, it can go to the next step so that we start getting information in the browser as soon as possible and do render as you fetch. Another benefit is that if, if we can use server components for most of our application, it means that we are delivering a lot of HTML to the to the browser that doesn't need to be hydrated, so that we are shipping less JavaScript to the to the browser. All our uh, interactivity will be in client components, of course. All right, so now let's have a quick look at a code example of a hydrogen page. In hydrogen, routing is based on the file system, meaning that when we get a request, the URL needs to match the path name of the of the file. In this case, we can see that we are exporting a server component in the default export. And this component is only going to run when the request has a get method. We can see that we are returning regular HTML and also some components. But if we look closely, we can see we are using a special hook, which is making a fetch request. When React finds this, this code, it's going to suspend the rendering of this component do something else in the meantime, and wait until the data is back. Once it's back, it resumes the rendering, and we can use the data from the response normally. Next, we have a, another server component nested in this one. And that server component can also make its own fetch request to get data, right? We are wrapping it in a suspense boundary and passing a skeleton component as the fallback. This all means that while that component is fetching data, we are going to send the skeleton component to the browser and render it until the data is ready. And then we can replace the skeleton with the real component. If the request that we get is not get, but it's other method like post, instead of rendering this component, we are going to be looking at the API function that we can also export from the same file. In this case, it's just a regular JavaScript function where you can run any business logic. For example, reading the, the request body, making a, a fetch request to a third party API, redirecting, or generating any type of response. All right, so 
Now that we kind of know how the core works in hydrogen, there is still one big problem that we need to solve. And that is that building headless storefronts is hard, even with a framework, because you need to build all the UI and all your components needs to be performant, reliable, and accessible. Uh, think, for example, of a shopping cart, which is quite complex. It needs to, to handle items, but also network errors, maybe even optimistic UI. So that's a lot of work. Fortunately, Hydrogen is not just a framework at the core, but also a set of UI components that are unstyled. So you can import them, put the CSS that you want, and, and use them in any kind of storefront. For example, it provides shopping cart, uh, checkout buttons, and even 3D models for the products. We used to, to include these components in the Hydrogen core, but recently we are transitioning to extracting these components into a separate package that we call Hydrogen UI. Right now, it's uh, in alpha version, and the main reason we wanted to do this is to make it compatible also with other frameworks. And it's actually already compatible with some of them, such as Remix or Next.js. Uh, aside from that, we also provide some templates uh, where you can find Hello World to start from scratch, but also a full feature demo store where you can find really every possible feature that you will think of in a, in a storefront, such as user accounts, search page, journal, and so on. All of that is powered by Vit, so you're probably familiar with the developer, developer experience. All right, next, let's have a look at some examples of how we use Vit in Hydrogen to make all of this possible. First of all, uh, in Hydrogen right now, we are defaulting to Vit 2. That's because uh, V3 wasn't stable when we released uh, Hydrogen 1.0. But Hydrogen is already compatible with V3, so we will probably default to that version once we release the next major version of Hydrogen. So let's start with an example of uh, how we find the routes in a Hydrogen project. Originally, we asked the user to pass to import all the routes and pass them to Hydrogen. But we wanted to do that automatically. Um, and by using Vit, this was possible. One of the features I like the most in Vit is uh, the virtual files. So for example, here, in order to import all the routes, we import from a virtual file and assume it's going to return all the routes from the user application. And then we can continue and create our, the router and so on. The next step will be um, creating that virtual file, right? At the bit level. So we create a plugin with a load hook. If we match the, the ID for the virtual file, then we're going to provide some code. And the code is basically using import metaglob that is also provided by bit with the, with the path to, the, to all the routes. The path can be modified in Hydrogen config. So we read it from there and append a glob to find all the server components in that directory. And Vit is going to resolve this import meta glove at a later stage in another plugin. And with that, it's going to import all the routes in the file system from the user and re-export that so we can get it in Hydrogen Core. Next, let's talk a bit about Hydrogen extensibility. So right now, we are actively working on a plugin system for Hydrogen so that third-party developers can integrate their own services with uh, Hydrogen. Think, for example, of a plugin that when you install it, you get uh, user accounts automatically. Or another plugin that when you install it, you get error reporting to a third-party service, such as Sentry, for instance. For this, we didn't need to relay, rely on Vit to make Hydrogen ex extendable in many different areas. We can look at the right side, and this is what we think a Hydrogen plugin could look like even though it's not the final version yet. For instance, a plugin could provide a middleware file that exports a function that runs before Hydrogen can handle a request. A plugin could also export route files, just like the in-app routes, which can contain, again, uh, server components or API functions. And a plugin could also export um, public files, such as a service worker, for instance. 
if we take a look at how we can implement the routing from a from a plugin we can see that we can go to the same virtual file that we had in the previous example where we were exporting all the user routes and basically just add a bit more of code here uh, where it's basically a, a new line per plugin and again we rely on import metaglot from bit that is resolved at a later stage and what this is going to be is that suddenly from the same virtual file we have all the user routes uh, re-exported but also all the routes provided by different plugins also re-exported right and then we can merge them later in our router and, and continue we found that in general bit makes this very manageable and in fact all the other um, extensibility points are fairly similar to this finally we have here one more example this time related to the react server components uh, integration that we made for bit first we need some context here so in react server components we have basically two different builds one for the server uh, where the entry file is your your main application with the react tree that means it bundles server components and also client components and well some other routing logic and wiring logic and on the other side we have a build for the browser which is kind of different from a typical single page application client build in this case we don't bundle any component we only bundle generic hydration logic and some minimal error handling um, but apart from that we also need some kind of utility that allows us to fetch client components on demand so when the server says we need a we need to hydrate a counter component for the in, in the browser we need to know how to fetch that counter component and then hydrate it right so if you look here at the bottom you can see this kind of a utility that we need it's basically an object that when the server says use counter.client then we can know how to download it from the from the server however how can we create this kind of utility in the in the build for the browser if we are not importing any client component at this point but all the client components are importing the server instead there are probably a number of solutions for this but the one that we are using is kind of peculiar so let's see imagine we are running on a build for the for the browser here so this this is a vid plugin running a browser build and of course we are going to use again a virtual file like in every other feature and inside that we're going to create a secondary vit instance um, since vit is so fast to to create and to load everything we don't really perceive any any penalty uh, while doing that this in the client build right so once we have our secondary vit instance we are going to load the server entry point just load it once we have that that's going to discover all the client components in the application because it's traverse all the import statements and and uh, adds them to the module graph therefore we can use that module graph to find all the client components and use that in the main bit instance that that we had before the one that is running the build right so once we find the path for every client component we can now create our utility for fetching client components which basically is like this we again rely on import metaglob we merge all those import metaglobs and end up with a with an object that has a key from that, that the server also understands and we can import the the generated chunks for each client component all right so that's all for now if you want to know more about hydrogen you can uh, have a look at our github repo or join our discord channel and if you have any question feel free to reach out on, on twitter thank you